There's going to be a lot of stuff I touch on in this video. I'm going to try not to ramble too much, but there's a lot of stuff I have to cover. This is all the stuff over the last year on, for me, making content in Tarkov and all the things that have happened for the guys that have been around my channel for a while you're gonna have seen some of this stuff i'm going to touch on as much as i can in one video and the links to the actual videos that go into much more detail will be in the videos linked i'll say when they're being linked so let's get into it obviously the first one off the rip that i have to address is me and my situation with my past and me having a troll channel before this channel where I trolled streamers and basically just made videos uh, fishing streamers for reactions via uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, groups of us would show up in their chat and, you know, do stuff. Uh, we would, um, you know, we would use exploits in games to give streamers a hard time and, and get their, re all sorts. I basically just used to have a troll channel uh, years ago. And basically the whole idea of the channel was to get streamers reactions and um that was basically what the channel was it was called the bored australian degenerate uh it was pretty successful for a small channel got a fair bit of views until it eventually got uh cancelled i got a cease and desist from bohemia interactive solely for using a third party program and showing that in my video on youtube uh channel got removed i grew up a little bit i had a child um I started a new YouTube channel quite a while later. There's no rules on YouTube for losing a channel and starting another one. You can have 10 channels if you want on YouTube. No rules against it. Started another channel, grew up a little bit, and I make different type of content now. I know a lot about people using third-party programs to assist them in the game. I know a lot about how that all works, and I speak out against people doing that because it's the wrong thing to do and a lot of people say to me and st st a lot of people still have an issue with uh my past and which is fair enough uh, i completely understand that and you know the truth is i the reason i speak out against people doing that is because i don't agree with people doing that i it's not the right thing to do and people shouldn't do it and i wasn't the type of person who was doing it to pretend i was like a, a cracked player on stream it was blatantly obvious in my videos that I was, whatever I was doing in the video, whether it was using a, a game exploit to uh, get a reaction from a streamer or whether it was a group of us um, stream sniping someone or whether it was me using a cheat to uh, troll a streamer or, or whatever. It was blatantly obvious that that's what I was doing in the video. There was no deception about it. And when I made my video coming clean about it, uh, a lot of people still have an issue with how I carried myself in that video. And the truth is, the reason I was so blunt and honest in that video is because I didn't expect pity from anyone. I don't ex I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me or, or you know, it's it, that video was more so me just telling people something stupid about my past that I did. And it might come across as me being not remorseful or, or, or sorry or that I don't care or, or whatever, whatever people say. But the reality is I, I didn't I like when you tell people your past, you know, it's it, that's like a that's a part of my life. And there's no there's no rule book or handbook to follow when you make content. You know, when you start a channel, there's no outline of how long you're supposed to make content for before you tell people mistakes you've made or tell people stuff about your life or it eventually got to the point where I decided it was the right thing to do to tell people and my plan at the time was to step away from YouTube permanently anyway because I was about to have a kid and and I wasn't really interested in continuing YouTube but I ended up still doing it which I'm happy for because I've I'm I'm doing better than I've ever done before on YouTube and to be honest, being honest and being yourself is the best thing that happened for me on this channel. And I say this to a lot of people I, I uh, bring up for cheating, you know, streamers that might be cheating on stream. I, I say this to them also, you know, this it's, it isn't the end of your content path because you made a mistake, you know, but people that aren't honest, I, I definitely think they're the people that will keep doing it. And just because someone's cheated, in my opinion, I don't think that means they're going to cheat for the rest of their life. I think if they're willing to be honest about it and, and talk openly about it, I think that's the person who will stop and sees that it's not the right thing to do. And 
something I've noticed, a recurring thing, is the people that I expose for cheating, they, they're never honest and they're never able to talk openly about it. They always uh, will do everything other than that. And that's someone who will keep continuing the behavior. And that's definitely the first thing that I will address in the video that for me personally, I feel like is, is a big issue. And I wish it didn't happen. It did happen. And one day I grew up and realized it's not the right thing to do. And what do you do from there? Do you just keep continuing the behavior or do you be better? And I chose to be better. So, you know, we move forward from that, but it did happen. And everyone knows that. And I'm happy everyone knows that because here I am bigger and better than ever. In the year that I've had this channel, the very first saga off the rip, when I first started this channel, I think it was like my, it was one of the very first videos I ever posted on this channel. And the reason I posted this video was because coming from uh, someone, being someone who cheated, I knew at the time that, and I'd seen lots of conversations going on in cheating communities, that a huge way that cheaters were being banned was by dropping a ton of loot to other people and using that as a method to pay for their cheats. And I saw lots of streamers doing it at the time I spoke out against it and I knew that BSG was cracking down on this and a lot of people were being banned for this and it was very successful against cheating and that's the reason I spoke out against it a lot of streamers at the time spun it into I just hate streamers and I'm just after streamers and no no uh even Pestilli chimed in and said, you know, basically insinuated it's just BSG making the game terrible and giving streamers and players a hard time. But no, that's not the case at all. The reality is if you drop a certain amount of loot in value in raid continuously, your account will get manual reviewed. And if you're found to be cheating, you will be banned. If you continually keep doing it and you're not cheating, you will be banned. It is a method they use to stop cheating, and it works. It bans a lot of cheaters, and I'm very glad BSG doubled down on this, and they didn't give in to streamers, and it is still to this day very successful way of catching people cheating and catching people that are closet cheating or doing stuff behind the scenes to make back money that they're spending on cheating because it is very expensive to cheat in this game. Believe it or not, a lot of people complain about the price of this game, but that in itself self is a huge cheater deterrent. These guys can't just pay $60, $50 for a standard account every week and keep getting banned. That's why they all closet cheat. It's very rare you come across a rage cheater. They're all closet cheating because being banned in this game is a hassle. It's expensive. Cheats are expensive. So they're all trying to pay for their cheats by dropping loot to people. And I spoke up. I faced seven or eight DMCAs in that time. I was relentlessly attacked by streamers communities. I had streamers on stream to thousands of people flat out lying about me, just staying, saying stuff that just was not true. Bro, you guys want to know the, the sad part about this too? One of the guys that he's friends with that makes the videos was basically like... This, this is what he said, okay? I, I, I checked his logs. He was like, Tiggs, when you get a stream rhyme, can you ask them to make it a gun so you can kill yourself with it? Smiley face. That's what he said. Like, bruh. That other people make my videos and I was saying and doing stuff that I just was not doing and they never showed proof for either you know I, I like to show proof in my videos I've always done it only to still be called a clout chasing liar in the end anyway but that's fine you know people watch my videos for a reason they know I'm not just some wacko that just picks a streamer one day and decides that's the guy I'm gonna call out today for cheating or scamming their audience or whatever it be and any rational adult can watch this information and come to whatever opinion they want to. If they want to blindly believe a streamer that's showing no proof, then, you know, good luck to them. And sure enough, all these streamers later on ended up getting banned. And I was right all along. And I have a huge video about it. It's called Tiggs Was Finally Banned for Taking Viewer Kits. And I was right all along. And, you know, Tiggs never apologized, never apologized for false DMCAing me, never apologized for saying I was wrong, and I never expected him to. And I'm still banned from all those streamer streams for speaking out against that. And the only reason they went to the lengths of trying to silence me the way they did was because I was 
speaking the truth. It's disappointing, Pastor Lee, that you stuck up. I think it's a little disappointing to see you stick up for streamers who got donated 1 billion rubles worth of loot within two months that were warned and still did it anyway and then played victim when banned. And this is why your name's 10 IQ. And this is why your name's 10 IQ. In the end, they got banned for it. I was right, and everything I was saying was reality. And it's the state of the game. BSG is trying to stop cheating, and they're going to put that over streamers wanting to get viewer kits. It doesn't affect players like streamers try to manipulate the player base into thinking. The average player cannot drop $500 million worth of loot in two, three weeks. They tried to spin this bullcrap narrative that this is going to affect players. If I drop my gear to my friend every single raid because he's so bad he dies every raid, I insurance fraud his other gear and I just drop him gear over and over and over again, am I going to get banned? And what's the point of that? Like, that's so stupid. The whole game is built around a community. This game sucks. No, the average player would loot $500 million worth of items in an entire wipe, let alone dropping it to someone else in two, three weeks. You know, they tried everything to manipulate this into staying in the game and it didn't and i was right and you know what i would like it if 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 i could stream and, and my viewers could drop me stuff that would be fun don't get me wrong i agree it would be fun but if it's a method that's stopping cheating then i think i'm grown enough to step back and say you know what if that's banning cheaters and that's a method bsg use uses to detect cheaters then i'm grown enough to stand back and say no you know what i'll just not take viewer kits and we'll leave that be as a method to detect cheating and all these streamers weren't able to do that and that's unfortunate week of a cheat okay the second one 44 dollars for a week that's what most of them buy then there's 30 days of a cheat which is 170 so up here cheat 50 dollars a week okay that's how much a cheat is down instantly paying for a cheat okay now Another thing is they also have to pay for their account. An EOD account, so they don't look sus. We're going to take this from the average cheater's perspective, okay? They buy an account for $100. Then they buy their cheat key for $50 a week, okay? Then they have to buy a spoofer for $30 a week. That changes their hardware ID so they can play and cheat without being... All above board, and then I scrolled down. It gave me instructions to not inform YouTube that this was a paid promotion. So in other words, it gave me instructions to insinuate that to my viewers that this was an application that I personally use and recommend and it's not a paid promotion and also not even register this on my video as a paid promotion and just flat out basically recommend it to my viewers because I used it and it works for me. And this is... In that video, I showed that this company had referenced Sheaf and multiple other Tarkov streamers and sent links of their videos saying that these guys followed the contract to a T and they're partnered with these guys. And I just stated that in my video and I said, you know, maybe these guys didn't read the contract properly. And that's simply all I said. And this was the reply I got from a certain streamer. They even paste Sheaf's video in the bottom of the contract saying, here's a reference as someone who followed the contract down to the T. Right down the bottom of the contract, a reference and a YouTube link as someone who followed the contract down to the T and someone who was pointed out as a reference. If you need someone, if you need a video to lean off, there's a reference, Sheaf. And of course, the man himself uh, spoke up. He had something to say. Nah, yeah. That dude is a fucking weirdo. Does a bunch of hate pieces. The most recent one being about me. In which he had his information wrong. He's saying I didn't disclose a sponsor, which <laughs> if you go and look at the video. Oh, damn, right in my face. If you go and look at the video, it literally is like the first pop up. It says paid promotion. So, was it not true? No, it was not true. <laughs> it's not contract. Maybe a contract that they offered him. Uh, the stuff he showed, it didn't look anything like what I had gotten. But I have agents, so I have an agency that goes to do all that for me. They send me a brief and just has 
bullet points on what I need to do, in which it always includes the TOS stuff, which isn't paid sponsorship. And I have an editor that runs my YouTube channel that is it literally does it for a living. So that we've followed absolutely every single TOS in law every single time. So 100, appreciate the 17 months, brother. And the dude, he's literally a cheater, man. So it, it, like he's admitted to cheating. <laughs> so the, and then if you bring it up, he, he'll try and be like, yeah, that's what everyone says. Saying, yeah, because it's fucking true. So he's a piece of shit that drama farms. I, I just don't like those type of people, man. The most amazing part about this is that he actually inboxed me after this rant and asked me to remove the video and actually found that hilarious because he sat there and abused me on his stream and said a lot of, you know, terrible stuff about me. And all I did in my video was simply just point out that he was referenced on this contract as someone who followed it to the T and did not insult the guy in any way and just spoke facts. And in return, I got abuse and, you know, called every name under the sun. But then he reached out to me and asked me to remove the video. And no, no, Chief, I will not remove the video. Uh, you have to abuse me and call me a cheater because that's what liars do. They have to uh, degrade the person that they're talking about. They have to insinuate that person's crazy. They have to run their name through the mud because they're lying and manipulating. And that's exactly what you did. You didn't show any proof like I did in my video. All I did was show proof and speak on facts. All you did was uh, become abusive just about like every other cheater I've exposed on this channel. And you most certainly bring up that I cheated in the past. And every single person I've exposed on this channel has always done that and they will always do that because that is the only card left they have to play. And Sheaf isn't the only one that took this deal with this company and still to this day is partnered with them. By the way, a lot of Tarkov streamers are still partnered with this company. And this company tells their creators to lie to their audience and pretend that this app is amazing and great and not disclose that it's a paid promotion. And if these guys didn't do that and didn't follow those instructions, they wouldn't have been paid. And why would they promote a company they're not being paid to promote? Sheaf is basically saying he broke the contract's rules, promoted them anyway, and then didn't get paid. You can't have it both way, bro. You either followed the contract and broke the rules and then maybe changed your video three months later once you got a bit of heat for it, or you didn't. You did what I did, what any good person would do and say no to this contract because it's not right. It's it's not right to lie and scam your audience into purchasing. And it says this app is free. It's not free. You install it and it instantly demands your credit card details and spams your PC with notifications for your credit card. And if you give it your credit card, you cannot get out. It just keeps taking money from your credit card anytime there's money on there. It's In my mind, it's a scam. And that's what these people are pushing. And also on top of that, they're lying and not disclosing it's a paid promotion. I'll show you a couple of the clips. Do you hear any of them saying this is a paid promotion in their video? Some of them might have went back later and clicked paid promotion on YouTube, but they sure as hell followed the contract in their videos. The way for my gameplay is insane. And if you're not, because you're dying to be safe in hit range, because we all know the servers in this game are... I'm going to tell you how to fix this shit. The software I'm using for this is Gear Up Booster. The link's going to be down in the description or in the pinned comments below. All you're going to do, download it. It'll pop up. It's going to appear like this. Your main game is going to appear automatically on the dashboard. If it doesn't, all you got to do is just scroll down, then all your games will appear here. Select the game and then hit Boost. That's it. With Gear Up, it has full access to network carriers and game servers. So it's able to automatically assign you the city that's closest to you, even if it's outside your region. To boost your game. It is latency free. So if you get about 100 ping, Gear Up will give you 50. I'm going to keep it a thousand. I do not see a 50 ping difference since my internet is pretty powerful. I see about 10, 12 ping difference, which is great for me. Where I do see the biggest difference is if I want to play servers that are way out there. So let's say Japan, for example, I get about 260 ping on Japan. Actually, I'll probably just show you in real time, right? So we can see our ping. And that's our normal ping, 252 right now. I switch my servers to japan on the booster hit the boost wait for it to do its thing and instantly we'll be able to see our ping from japan go to 178 and now it's playable which is insane some points to mention is that it's latency free and it doesn't mess with the game's data ensuring a band free experience so it's completely safe to use highly recommend it and if you're trying to gain a competitive edge this could be a game changer for you this might be good as possible since we talk a lot about the game settings which make your overall performance better and you generally enjoy the game more, I'm going to talk about something else which will make your experience on Tarkov better. As you know, Tarkov servers are not being known for the best quality servers. Sometimes you might get ping issues, sometimes you will get packet loss. And generally, early wipe 
it is really tough to find games as well as scav raids. So there's a lot of people playing. I generally spend like 10 minutes looking for a scav game. And I would recommend everybody to select as many servers as possible to get into the games fast. However, so for some people, uh, the issue might be the ping. If your ping is too high, you cannot select specific servers. So there is an app that I use. It's called Gear Up Booster. You can try it out for free. You literally download it, log in using, using your Google account or you create one, and you can use it. Like no, no, no credit cards, uh, no nothing. You know, you download it and you can try it for free. So um, whenever I... Um, used to boost my ping, you can see the difference uh, for, to, to all the servers. Let's look at Europe and NA. As you can see, my ping to Europe North is 40, Europe Central 65, and my ping to NA Northeast is 135. Let's activate the booster. And now my ping to US uh, is 106, and EU is 35 and 36. Since right now I have much lower ping, I can connect to more servers and have better experience as well for myself uh, and for the other players. Since my ping is less, there is less speaker's advantage, blah, blah, blah. Also, gear up, um, gear up adjusts uh, different servers based on the server you connect to. So every single time you connect to a different server uh, in the game, you can see which server you connected to. And gear up adjusts which uh, intermediate servers they use. So you get lower ping and no packet loss. Uh, so yeah, gear up is a sponsor of this video, but I've been using them for quite a while. Try it out for free, and if you don't like it, just don't use it. It's a really convenient app. You just click one button, and it reduces your ping by like 30, 50 milliseconds. So give it a go. Uh, Shadow's quality, I put it. I don't have this guy's internet connection. And thanks to Gear Up Booster, my connection is more nasty than ever. But come on, what is Gear Up Booster? Well, let me tell you something. Let's say you're an European like me, and you want to play Tarkov or NA servers, because you heard it's much easier to do PvP there. Or maybe it's quite the opposite. You're an American who wants to play in Europe. In my case, I can't really play on any servers due to high ping. As you can see, my ping is around 130 to 140. And sometimes because of this, I die and lose all my loot. But now, with one simple click, you can get a better connection. This is me playing on NA servers with the lowest ping I ever had. And I don't even want to mention how easy I destroyed that guy that tried to strafe me. He had exactly zero chances. Basically, this app helps you find the closest server to your home and maintains a stable connection that is latency free. And also because it only stabilizes your network, it's completely safe to use and it will not lead into your account being banned. So stay chill, Nikita won't come after you. Low ping, low deaths? Yeah, maybe. And the best thing is that you can try it for free. By using the link in the description, you'll get a 3 days trial to try it out yourself. Thank you Gira Booster for sponsoring this video. Now that you have a good internet connection, we can stay in peace and harvest all the loot in the world. Uh, for example, when in raid, having high ping can be incredibly frustrating. If you're seeing the funny number every time you boot up Tarkov, I have a solution for you. Gear Up Booster is a software that can reduce your ping at the click of a button. No other setup, no other hoops, just click boost and you're going. Gear Up can cut your ping in half, dropping you from over 100 down to 50. Even better, it keeps a stable and steady connection, preventing random ping spikes. When you're about to swing somebody, the last thing you need to worry about is if your ping is going to go... <laughs> this also allows you to swap servers and play in regions you couldn't before. If you're in Europe and want to play with buddies in North America, or if you just want to come to our server since the skill level is generally lower and you'll probably have an easier time, then ping is no longer a limiting factor. We joined EU servers from North America without gear up and our connection was clearly struggling. Then we rejoined with gear up active and it improved dramatically. You can boost your connection and improve your rating experience right now by downloading gear up using my link below. Now onto actual Tarkov things, um, setup is mis- The guy that I'm going to show in this video, you see, he didn't call me a liar or a cheater, but instead he banned me from his stream solely because I made a video showing proof that his teammate was a cheater. This is the, this is the kind of thing I've learned to expect from Tarkov. Let it be. Look, man. I wish you the best 10 IQ, but... <laughs> I don't think I don't really respect the type of content you make, man. Like I said, like I, if you were going around in the game and you're playing good and I like, make content on trying to make you play better, I, I would I'd follow you, bro. And I, would, you know, I'd appreciate that kind of content. But you don't give me that kind of content. You just have community. So, anyways, bro, I wish you luck. Don't take this personal, but get the fuck out of my chat. <laughs> Uh, he has to ban me. They all have to ban me. They all have to ban me, bro. It's the way it's gotta be. It's the way it's gotta be.
The mind-blowing thing to me is these are the same people that will sit on stream all day saying Tarkov is completely full of cheaters, but then they will be offended when you prove their teammate is cheating, okay? They're the same type of people who will either do that or call you a liar, a cheater, and a clout chaser if you explain how their teammate is cheating and show proof. Content creators in general, their goal is to get views, grow their channel and get recognized. Someone like me coming along and showing the Tarkov community how these people are cheating is not good for them. And you would think these people would have a, a good outlook for the game, you know, and, and after them learning that their teammate is cheating or their friend is cheating, you'd think it'd be an entirely different response. You'd think they'd be like, wow, you know, you wouldn't think they would be angry or the amount of streams I've gone into and been banned from solely for exposing someone in a streaming circle for cheating or I've even had times where I've gone into a streamer's chat and they've banned me because I've watched their friends VODs because someone has reported that person to me for cheating and that is offensive to them but yet they'll sit on stream and say the game is riddled with cheaters and it's an offense to them if I watch their VODs and I'm never going to stop doing it. I, I'll show you guys a clip. I exposed a cheater recently and something I've noticed lately is every single person I've exposed for cheating recently, they all know exactly who I am. Yo, are you playing with Abyss today or what, homie? Who's Abyss? What the fuck are you talking about? 10 IQ Gaming YouTube. The guy you play labs with, man. I don't play with a guy named Abyss. I don't know what you're talking about. This guy just came in here on some interrogation shit. <laughs> Quit trying to pick me for drama. Grow up, buddy. No, I know who this dude is. <clears throat> I know you know who I am. That's why you're getting offended by just a question. You have to act super offended. This guy's about to make a little hacker video. And that tells me that I'm ch achieving exactly what I'm setting out to achieve. These guys all know exactly who I am and they all instantly have to discredit me and call me a cheater and do everything they can other than just being honest. It it's it's crazy. There's something I, I don't talk about this much on my channel. There was actually one time well, since I've been doing this where I've been investigating someone and I found proof pretty quickly that they were cheating. And I decided to reach out and inbox them. And this streamer actually really surprised me. He just, he, he didn't reply for about half an hour and then he replied and he just got honest and told me everything. Told me he had been cheating, he started cheating recently, and basically just came clean to me. And I made the choice not to make a video about this person, solely because I believe if, if someone is in a place where they're willing to be honest, I believe that person will change. And this streamer, he ended up quitting Tarkov not long after that, and he streams a different game now, and he's doing better than what he was streaming Tarkov. And maybe he should have done that before he started cheating, but he made the mistake, he was honest to me, and I left the dude alone. I felt no need to expose that person, because that person was already honest to themselves. And the guys that aren't honest and act like the guy in the clip I just showed you, they're the people that need to be pointed out because they, they are the people that will continue the behavior. And me exposing them is not going to stop them because they're going to continue lying. They're going to show all the signs of a, a narcissist and, and a person who is lying and, and they, they have to discredit me and insult me any way they can. And any grown adult can watch this footage of how these people act and see that this is not an innocent person. J just like how Sheaf reacted earlier. They have to insult you. They have to discredit you. And if you actually think logically and look at their reply, they don't show proof of anything. All they literally do is basically just to trust me, bro. And then they have to run my name into the ground and insult me when all I'm doing is just bringing up facts and proof. And that is it. I don't insult them. I don't. Just like I did with Sheaf. I didn't insult him. Just showed proof. In return, he showed zero proof, gave a trust me bro, then insulted me, then reached out to me and demanded I take the video down. And that's not how an innocent person 
behaves. It's just not. And if these guys are, are this scared that I'm going to be reviewing their VODs and people in the player base have someone to reach out to and speak to about being cheated on, that's why I'm going to keep doing this. And when I go into these guys' streams and they abuse me and call me a cheater, in my mind, it's that's a case closed to me because that just proves without a doubt in my mind that you are behaving that way because that is the only card you have left to play. And that means I've just checkmated you. And hopefully the person then moves on from that and, and changes the behavior and, and is better. And, and I wish for the people I expose, I wish that for them. I wish that they could just be honest and, and, and learn what I learned that you being honest isn't the end of your content path. You can go on and do bigger and better things. And just like what happened with me, me being honest about my past didn't end my channel. My channel's now doing better than it ever has before. It's not the end. It doesn't have to be. But if you lie, it, people aren't dumb. People are in the Tarkov player base are starting to get really wise to this stuff. They're, they're not silly. And they can gauge these people's replies and responses and, and work it out for themselves pretty quickly and the guy i showed in the clip earlier barely streams anymore just like suddenly toast he streams once a week now maybe once a fortnight what i what i've realized is once you expose these people for being a cheater they don't have the drive to stream anymore because they base their entire content off pushing a lie that they're a cracked player when deep down they know they're not and that's why they use cheats and then once that gets exposed to people it eats away at them because they know that their their viewer doubts them and knows that their content is fake they're not a chad they're not a cracked player and that takes away the enjoyment for them they don't enjoy streaming and cheating every day anymore because they know their viewer has doubts and that's why they do it is because they believe that their viewer is their fantasy is that people believe that they're this cracked player when they're not. And for the people I have exposed, I, I, I hope they continue making content. I hope they're able to be honest. And lately, I've gone out of my way to even show the process of me investigating people and show more of the circumstances where I investigate people and they turn out to not be a cheater. And I've deliberately shown more of that, even though people aren't really interested in that. People just seem to be only interested in streamers getting exposed and that's it. You know, I've done a few videos lately, like the Landmark one, the Fragus one, um, and a couple of others where I come to the conclusion that they're not cheating in the video and they don't get as many views. People don't get as excited to watch them. People just seem to want to watch a streamer get exposed for cheating and, and that's it, you know. But I feel like it's a better thing for me to show more of the ones where the person ends up not being a cheater because the truth is a lot of streamers get reported to me a lot and the truth is most of them end up not being cheaters and I'm going to show more of that just so, I mean, because the truth is, people's assumptions in the player base, the, the stuff I read in my streamer reports, or the stuff that people say to me, the conclusions they come to of why someone is cheating, they're just very highly uneducated. And that's why I do this, so I can show these people the facts and the reality and give them the best chance they have to call bullshit when they see it and know what the reality of the state of this game is. And that's why I enjoy doing this. If I didn't feel like what I was doing was the right thing to do, I wouldn't still be doing this a year later. I enjoy doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. And no one's ever going to stop me from doing this. And streamers not wanting to be my friend or streamers not wanting to associate with me, that's not going to deter me from doing this either. And... Every single cheater I expose knowing who I am just proves that to me that I'm doing this properly. That's the end of the video. That's about as much as I wanted to put in this video. That's probably the most craziest stuff I've been through over the last year that I can squeeze into a video. There's, there's a lot more, but it's just, I don't want the video to be too long. That's the video. Thank you for watching. Hey, I'd be offended if you didn't ban me. <laughs> I'd be offended if you didn't ban me. That means I'm not doing my job properly. That means I'm not achieving what I'm setting out to achieve if they don't ban me. I ain't doing this to make friends like some other people, clearly. The sad thing is,
that guy thinks he's going to stream and make real friends, but the reality is when you make content, none of the people you associate with making content are your friends. That's not how content works. They're not your friends. He'll figure that out one day. He'll figure that out. The crazy thing is every content creator that I ever thought I was friends with when I started doing this, they're not. They're all the same. Because the reason they're all the same is because they, they all have the same outlook. I want to have a bigger name. I want to have a big name. I want to get the most views. I want to be number one. And there's no friends in content. There's just not. If you if you get on stream every day, and it's sad for some people because some people just see the best in people, you know. But if you, yeah, that's not me. I, I'm not doing this to make friends, but I don't really care. It doesn't bother me that some streamer doesn't want to be my friend. It doesn't bother me at all. The fact that every streamer in Tarkov has to ban me, it just, if I was just some crazy delusional wacko who was wrong about everything, how come every single person whose stream I go into know exactly who I am and have watched my videos? 120,000 people don't just all watch a video and agree with some crazy wacko who just makes shit up and doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, the funny thing is the guy said, I've watched your videos. Of course you've watched them, bro. Of course you have. You play Tarkov. Of course you have. But then in the same breath, you're insinuating that I'm wrong and I'm a crazy wacko. You know what's going to happen? He's going to end up finding out there's no friends in content, bro. It's sad. He's new to streaming. Good luck to him. And the, the sad thing is he's defending a dude that doesn't, that, like, honestly, what do you think Gong's, do you think Gong would do the same for him? No. No. Not a chance in hell. Not a chance in hell. He thinks that Gong's his friend because he, dual streams with him anyway i'm getting off i'm gonna uh go put my tin foil hat on and choose a streamer that um i'm gonna frame for cheating tomorrow and that is gonna be what i'm gonna do today i think i think i think you're friends with the cheater who's manipulating you and conning you that's what i think if you want to know my opinion because I heard yours, you don't think I should make Tarkov content. I don't think you should play with cheaters and let cheaters lie and, and manipulate you, bro. That's what I think. That's my opinion. That's why I came to your stream, dude. But uh, I think you should make Tarkov content, though. Because uh, there should be more people making Tarkov content like you and less less people like Gong. That's what I think. That's my opinion, if it matters. But anyway. All right, I'm out of here. I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on and uh, decide which stream is cheating tomorrow.